This is interesting. I wrote that most of our fears have been instilled in us from belief systems, from our parents or religion, or from other people's uh, skewed perceptions. Fear can motivate us to get ahead in life because we are afraid of failure, or it can hold, hold us back from realizing our dreams, desires, and goals because we don't think we can do it. For many, it seems easier to be afraid than to believe in success. We need to honestly fact, face our fears by writing them down and looking at them realistically. And that means not rationalizing them, minimizing them, or succumbing to the, the power in our lives. Wow, I love that. And you know what? You have a good quote in that one, too, in that chapter, Love Versus Fear. You have a great quote, and it says, when the power of love, and it's important for right now, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Jimi Hendrix. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that Jimi was Hendrix. yours, yeah. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. That's very, very true. Very, it's very true. It's perfect now. Yeah, it is the perfect now. I, I, I'm finding that I, I look at this thing with Putin and I just, I want to find out more, of course, psychologically about this person. Um, and it's very interesting what people are saying, the pundits and people are saying about him and psychologically about him and so forth. And he's been isolated from the world and he's the power. And it's very interesting to see his background. In that. Well, I but always have think no of, sense. I, I always think of what our friend Mavis Patilla said. When I asked her, we were in New York, and we asked her what causes somebody to be a sociopath or a psychopath, because this is what we're looking at. And she said, it's when the soul doesn't enter the body. And she said, you pray for the soul, but it doesn't enter the body. How interesting. And that's how he could be so soulless and heartless. Or, or could it also be that he's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When the soul leaves the body um, from a trauma when they're young. Mm -hmm. Could be. the soul leaves about part of the soul leaves mm -hmm. the body yeah i mean there's so many factors involved but to be not aware about all the killings of human beings and, mm. and that, that 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 i don't i don't understand that to me i know i don't understand that. that's it's a hard part of this the physical earth this physical yeah. school well it's really, a lot of unfinished business that's for damn sure yeah yeah it's very very true mm. yeah so I, I always say to people, if you can leave this earth and you make it, uh, leave it a better place when you found it, then your life is a success. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple of questions. And so I want to yes. read these questions for you because um, so, uh, so people wrote these to me for you to, to ask you. She, a woman named Luisa Bazo says, a hu my husband or a husband that suffered loss of memory for a few years after a brain surgery and before he passed did not recognize his wife who was the love of his life. Does the husband on the other side know that the wife suffered for not, for he, that he didn't recognize her? Yes. Yes, very much so. And it wasn't his fault. So right. it wasn't his fault. So I wouldn't say yeah. suffering. Um, it happens a lot also with, in my experience, I found out that there are a lot of people that who have Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, <laughs> and then when they pass over and, um, they, I remember one in particular, one man said to his daughter, why weren't there any people, many people by funeral? Because he knew a lot of people. He was very well known. And she said, well, because you had um, dementia or Alzheimer's rather for about five, five to 10 years. So many of the people you knew died or they had gone. And and he was um, aware when she said that. But for, for him, because he was in a space of, now he's in a space of where there's no time, only linear time down here. And it seemed like a very strange thing for him because he couldn't tell time but he understood that when she said that it made it clearer for him mm. so um I, you know it's hard to say but uh, there have been some again each individual experience is so different there have been some situations where i brought through alzheimer's victims or or uh, dementia people <laughs> and they remember everything so and they just couldn't communicate it but the soul was very aware so it goes back both ways I, I, yeah. and again i don't know each one is an individual Okay, that's okay. I have another question here. And this is from Tracy Hildreth. She said, I believe my father is in the process of transitioning. So her father is pa soon to be passing over. Okay, so let's stop right there, Kelly. So okay. because he's in the middle of transition, what that means many times is, and, and I will stand by this one, because he's in a, a, a beginning of transition, many in the spirit side of life are transitioning, are waiting and preparing for his arrival. And they get preparing for his arrival for earth time would be a year. Um, to get everything ready for him. So when he passed over, it'll be very smooth passing. And he'll feel as if he just woke up and he's back home again. And they might create, many times they will tend to create, if you will, with their thoughts, they'll create um, the mother's house. 
and mm -hmm. it look exactly like the mother's house that he grew up in because it'll help with his transition. And if he's back into mom's house, it'll oh. look familiar to him. So they do a lot of that. So the, we know no one ever dies alone in the transitioning part. They're also moving in to help him. So got to remember okay. that. Okay. The soul is also transitioning and the soul has done this millions of times before right. thousands but right. millions it's left the physical body the human body or other types of bodies but the, the soul moves in out of the body every day goes in out so remember that dream state or sleep state so it, it in the transition period it's just moving out of the body it's getting ready to prepare for the final okay. yeah Go and she on. says um i have forgiven him so Good. that's a problem. Fantastic. She said, and I've, I've sent that message to him from me to his highest self in hopes right. that it, when it's his time, he'll go peacefully. Will I need to do this again after he passes away? So well, he hold receives on, right? the message. Wait, too fast. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait this something too fast. So first of all, read that again about the forgiveness. She said, I have forgiven him. Okay. And I've sent him a message to, to his, his highest, highest self. self. Okay, let's stop right there. So everybody that's watching this, that's the number one thing you can do. For those who hurt you, and let's say they can't communicate, uh, let's say they've passed over to this side, they can still feel and hear your forgiveness prayers, your thoughts. And we have to remember in forgiveness, it's a, it's a gift we give ourselves as well. You have to remember that those who do us wrong, many times, my good friend Kelly White taught me this, that those people are limited, that they may not be aware that they've done something bad because they don't know any better. Or they may be in a position where they just have don't have that idea that it actually affected you. This happened to me about a week ago with someone and they know it affected me. So in some ways they're harmless in that respect because they don't know any better. So when we talk about forgiveness and it's hard for a lot of you to forgive people, they might not be aware of it. And it might not be the right thing that they did. So you might be angry at the situation and what they did, but don't be angry at them because they might not know any better. The best thing you can do to help them to understand it is to forgive them. Continue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, will I need once he passes? Will I need to do this again so he can receive that message fully? Um, I would say no. You, you don't need to, but it sounds like a, a chore, actually, because send, you should send him love all the time because it's the right thing to do. It's not just something I forgive you goodbye. Continue to love him. That's what you really should do is continue to love him and under. It sounds like it's just I'm gonna forgive him, move on. It's an understanding that you come to. It's not just a one you push a button, it's done. It's an overwhelming understanding and unconditionally forgive him in every way because what has he taught you this lifetime? I'm sure there's, you know, the human being always tends to go to the negative things. What about the good things and the positive things that he taught you, that he left you with? He gave you life. There are many positive things. We, we look, look at people with negative, look at the positive things they left us or gave us. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. That So what you're saying also when you say this is, change your thinking which i love in your book when you talk about change your thinking and if we're going to talk about un, you know unfinished business one of the things that you can do is change your thoughts change the way you think change your outlook on things really change it and and try to see love in everything even in the worst circumstances try to think of love how is this loving how is this going to be loving how can i send love to people that die in the war how is there where, where's love can i want to send love to, to to open up putin to bring his soul back to love how can i bring love to a certain situation in my life to a person that treated me badly where is the love what can i do can i say something kind can i do something or maybe not to that person but maybe somebody else could do something kind to yeah. there's got to be love i mean everywhere I look around you there's, there's a beautiful world around us too don't be so stuck on the negative things but try to stay positive as bad as things get and this is and sometimes you have to self-talk as as negative and as bad things get i try to find the better and not in that situation, I look around and say, well, isn't that a beautiful sunset? Well, that's a lovely tree. I mean, try to find the magic that we're surrounded with. Don't be, don't be so myopic with your thinking and vision. Right. But see the broader picture because it's a bigger picture. Remember, you're in school. You're in soul school here. And there's going to be a lot of things that set you off. Don't get caught up in that of those small things. Don't get caught up in the small things. It's a bigger picture that matters. Well, and as you were saying that, I was thinking to myself, because I've had so many clients that are negative, and when they cross over, think about this: you don't want to cross over and then do a life review where you're looking at you're looking at your life review, and you'll think, "Oh my God, I was such a negative person." Change it now. Change your thoughts now. Look at all the time I wasted being negative. Right. Look at all that energy that was wasted on you know. Now when I lose my keys in my house or my wallet or my glasses, whatever. <laughs> well. They, and I used to get frustrated. Okay, where did I leave this or that? A lot of us do it. 
I think, you know what? They can't grow legs and feet and walk out the door. So they're here so. <laughs> And that's just the way it is. It's and it's true. It's like it. And then and my I use my mantra all the time. It is what it is, and that's all that it is. Don't let it upset you. Even I have a, a lady that works with me here at the house, and talk about her family being upset because someone did this and did that. The other family member. I'm like, so what? It doesn't matter. It is what it is. It's all that it is. Don't get caught up with the little small, small stuff. Right. No, look at the bigger picture. So you do. And she goes, I don't get involved. I said, that's good. Don't get involved. You shouldn't. It's not your stuff. But, you know, bring bring love. And another thing that happened on my show today was someone was talking about this. You can't force somebody to love. You can't force somebody to be a certain way. All you can do is plant the seeds for them. So you can just plant seeds. But don't get caught up in it because it's not your stuff. You can just spread the light. You can you can be who you are. And by example, show them. That's, that's right. the best way. Well, let's talk about... Um guilt and shame for unfinished business guilt and shame because you talk about in your book you've got a great story about survivor guilt and i've had clients that have had survivor guilt yeah i i went to the aids crisis and um mm -hmm. believe me i I've seen a lot of friends pass over a lot of my partners passed over a lot of that a lot of that happened um and i was working with aids product los angeles when it first started i was one of the first 16 people that started that in los angeles and wow. um, I used to, my, one of my jobs there was to drive the mothers of oh. AIDS uh, victims to group meetings. Wow. Wow. And, and to follow through with them after the, the son or daughter or whatever passed over. And um, there was a lot of guilt there. A lot of guilt. Um, yeah. And um, we don't want to have guilt. We just don't want that. Um, and resentment. That's why you have to live today fully. Fully and live in the moment. I, again, I always to go back to that analogy of tomorrow is your last day on this earth. What would you do today? You know, what would you right. do? Not to have guilt. Um, right. That's that's the, the simplest way to live. Look at the simple things. But a survivor's guilt. A lot of people have it. I know a lot of people, well, not a lot, several who survived World War II in Auschwitz, mm -hmm. and um, they felt guilty that they didn't go. But I said, well, the bigger picture is you had to tell, spread the word afterwards. You had to be a survivor to tell people right. the story. That's right. really important to make sure it doesn't happen again. And and they got that, but. There, there is, there is a tendency for people to have that. You know better than I do about that. I do. I had a client who lost his family in a plane accident when he was fourteen, and the whole family perished in a plane accident, and he survived because he wasn't there. He wasn't there because he had to go to a basketball game. So his parents said, "That's all right. You'll take the plane after the next day, and you'll we'll meet you then." And of course, that didn't happen. So he, along with his twin brother too, I mean, they all they all perished except for him. And the 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 guilt that he felt for not being on that plane, I kept saying, oh, "Well, listen, you were not supposed to be there. If you were, you would have been on that plane. You yeah, weren't I, supposed to." It's true. Again, we have to look at it from a soul's perspective, mm -hmm. not a human perspective. And on a soul's perspective, that's yes. again, a lesson to learn, a hard lesson. Oh. It's a big lesson. It's an advanced yeah. class lesson when you lose your entire family. I love. Yeah. I'm going to use that term. It was an advanced class lesson. Yeah, it's that's true. a good one. I always yeah. look at the school down here because I can't look at this as real because mm -hmm. this isn't real. This is an illusion. This is just for our souls to go through experiences and grow. This isn't real. It's not. And uh, we get to the side and look back there. Oh, it's that's a place we created. It was created for us, or we created helped create to go through these lessons for our soul to grow. And that's a tough one. Those are that's an advanced class lesson because that's tough when losing all of them. And then that soul chose that. That soul group chose that. Right. For that one soul right. to perhaps to grow, to understand, to love themselves right. more. To, who knows what the lesson was? Not just one simple lesson. It could be multi lessons, and it could also be a lesson which that soul is going to learn later in their life. And that soul will help other people hopefully later on in their life who've yes. gone through very similar situations. It happens all the time with them that I've seen with parents who lose children. And the time it happens, they say, I can't go on, I don't want to live anymore. And later on, they tend to, it forces them to get on their path. And many times it ends up, they help other parents go through the bereavement process. So right. I, I've seen that happen many, many, many times. There's no, I believe, Kelly, there are no accidents. I know it sounds really strange. Yeah. Car accidents, a plane accidents. I don't believe there are accidents. I think that the spirit world is such an intelligence, such a divine intelligence beyond the human comprehension that is in effect here, that they pull the strings, that there's a thread, this threads that runs throughout. Um, I've been lucky enough, fortunate enough to have a near-death experience where I've been aware of, if you will, the threads, yeah. um, which 
are all connected. So I have to believe there's a greater intelligence that there are no accidents, just situations and opportun opportunities. Right. Now we might not know at the time when something happens, what that opportunity is. It will come maybe years later, but I always look at things as opportunities now. And as I get older, more and more they're opportunities. Right. That's yeah. so true. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I lost once I lost a ring, a really special ring. It was an amethyst ring from Brazil that was kind of I saw on a journey there and it was stolen from my house. Mm. And and I got upset at first because of emotional sentimental, but then right away I said, wait, the person that took that needs it more than I do now. Wow. So it's how you look at it, it's changing your perspective of things. And yeah. it's true that, that whoever owns that needed it more than me, or I, I had my chance, but now someone else has it. Right. Wow. So let me, let's talk about for a second. Let me ask you about, let's say uh, you have a, a, a parent that has been extremely abusive and they die it's and very they common, die very common. Very common. And so when you talk about unfinished business, the person that is alive, the, the, the son or daughter yeah. never really got to deal with it or with it. And they never got to express themselves to their father. And maybe they stopped talking to their father for 10 years before, you know, before he died. So what I have an idea about that, but I'm curious about you. What do you think about that? I think they have a choice. Okay. I think there's a choice there. And I think they have a choice to be the victim or to rise above it and be the better then. And I think they can look at that situation and see, oh, well, maybe the father, what was the father's background? Maybe the father was abused when he was a young person and horrible. And what good would it do to hold on to that and be angry with him? That would make, that would continue it to grow and boil, if you will, cook. Instead of stopping and breaking that pattern, forgive him for whatever reason. Maybe that person doesn't know the reason why they were abused, why it happened, but they know it was wrong. So you can be, again, be wrong in the situation, but not the person himself. Because who knows why they did that? So I would rise above it and 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 use it as an opportunity to help other people who are in that situation, uh, who are in abusive situations, to to help them to forgive those who abuse them. And that person can easily write a letter to the spirit, the person in the spirit world, or say, I I would like to write a letter or a card. I really do. I do that, and then I just put it away, or I rip it up after I'm done, or I I, I leave it for that person's birthday. Mm -hmm. And I read it again, and then I let I burn it up and let it go, and I forgive them, and I love them. And I don't know the whole reason why they did that, but I know they they love me. But maybe they were skewed when they were a young person. Yeah, maybe one of the things that I have my people do, or whoever, when I talk about this, is I have them use what's called the empty chair. Are you familiar with that? The empty sure. chair, which is a it's a real gestalt technique in psychology, but it's really great for. Mediumship, but it's Spatilla. Mavis Patilla also does that with an exercise. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes, yes. Go yes. figure. Well, I love this technique because you put them, you put your loved one, or the person that you're you have a situation with that you're angry at, or unresolved business or unresolved feelings, you put them in a chair, and even though they're passed over on the other side, they will be sitting in that chair. And you tell them exactly what how you feel, how they hurt you. They'll be there, they will be listening to you. It's, it's a, a really greater, powerful technique. Very good one. Excellent. Excellent one. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Um, but then also, I think then at the end of that, they can think of the positive things. And exactly. Exactly. Because you want to always leave with the positive, not the negative. So you want to yeah. you know, live the rest of your life and, and, and see it for what it is and don't make it rule your life. Let it see that it was just an experience. Right. It was a situation. And I know that there are some, not every abuse situation, but I know there are situations as a young kid when there's abuse happening or certain problems and um, it makes a person a better person later on. Right. Personally, I was abused as a kid and I'll tell you something, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't. So it's, it's made me a better person. And it helps um, you to understand abuse from all, from that like from angle. All their angles, abuse, yeah. uh, addiction, everything, isolation, all that sort of thing. It teaches us, it teaches, it makes us a better person. Right. And again, always have a choice there's always a choice whether we can be better than rise up or fall down okay and a lot of people who become victims have a really um isolated life and it becomes a point where no one wants to be around that victim because all they talk about are negative things and that energy that sphere of energy oh. around them. You, you, you know this and i don't i actually got rid of a friend for 25 years she was a friend and she would she would oh just be nagging and angry about this and about husband not working and, this, and everything was negative and she came to my house where i live and i have a nice garden here as you know a very nice garden i created and we're walking and most people are like wow and it's just to put my love and energy into it and it's nice it's a nice space it's nice to be in the country 
And she walked up and says, I don't like the country. I don't like trees, but I kind of like your place. Why is that? And at that moment, I thought, this is taking up a lot of my energy and I don't want to support this anymore. So I said, <laughs> bye bye. I can't have you in my space anymore at all. Wow. Because in your life, you want people that support you and enable yeah. you, not disable you. And that comes right. in all different ways, you know, all different ways. And 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 recently in, in my life, um, there have been people that, um, a person or so forth, that you want to help or you want to be around and you think they get it and you find out they don't understand you <laughs> for whatever reason. And you got to yeah. let them go too because they don't get it. They're not, that's not supportive. They're not, again, you want people in your life that support you, mm -hmm. enhance your life, not take away from your life, not using you. Stuff like that. You got to be very selective. And as you get older, by the way, it happens even more. It does happen <laughs> because your tolerance level gets less. <laughs> your container's like, no, I'm full. I can't I handle it anymore. I can't take it. Yes. Thank All you, everybody. Right. Thanks, 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 everybody. Bye, Thanks, everyone. James. Bye, bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean left. Yeah!